Bada bing, bada bam. Welcome to this week's Bake It a Mystery, Bake It a Murder episode. Okay, listen, Tiffany has been telling me about this freaking movie. Apparently, it came out in theaters in 2022 in China, and it just came out today on Netflix, and I watched it. I'm literally filming this the day before you're seeing this, just so I can tell you about this movie, okay? There was a whole meme about this movie. Every couple walks into the movie theater, all cute, all happy, all holding hands. The minute that they step out of the theater, boom, neither of them trust each other. Both of them are suspecting each other of something. We don't know what that something is, but something weird is going on. It's also speculated that this movie was based off of a case that we covered recently on Rotten Mango. I'm not gonna tell you which one until the end, but you can take a guess and let me know in the comments. So with that being said, we're making ghost puff pastries. Boo. <laughs> the story opens with a man desperately trying to get the police officer's attention. He's at the police station. He's using English to try and communicate with the other officer. And the whole thing takes place in this make-believe resort town in Asia. But the husband is Chinese. Now he's literally on the brink of tears as he's trying to convince the police to do something about his missing wife. And he's screaming like, please, you gotta help me. You gotta do something about it. And the officer is just walking away from him in this busy police station. He doesn't even, he doesn't even pretend to listen. He doesn't even pretend to care. Henry, the husband, is just trailing after him and he keeps talking about his wife. Why aren't you listening to me, officer? Why aren't you taking this seriously? I said that she's missing. She's gone. It's been 15 days. 15! You said you guys are here for your one year wedding anniversary? Maybe she got cold feet after marrying you for a year and ran off. Maybe she met another man. It's a beach town. I mean, shit happens. I've seen all sorts of cases here. Henry looks flabbergasted. Like, is this man serious right now? but he still is trying to be nice because he needs this police officer's help. He needs this cop to investigate. No, <laughs> officer, you don't get it. She would never run off. And even if she did, why would she do it here? She, she doesn't know anyone. I've looked everywhere. Please, I'm begging you. Can you just investigate? The detective is completely checked out. He actually even starts going over different case files with another detective in the station and Henry is getting outright ignored. And he slams his hand down on the table and he starts screaming in Mandarin, hey, you son of a bitch, do you even fucking care? Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get the puff pastry. Then you're gonna get your little ghost cutouts and cut out cute little ghost. Oh yeah, oh, these are adorable. So the detective, he finally looks up from his papers because this guy is cussing him out now and two other officers drag Henry out of the police station, throw him on the ground on the concrete outside. And he's still trying to say, please, my wife is missing, just do something. And he runs out to the poster board with all of the missing posters, like they're just tacked on there. It's one of those big um, cork boards. And he starts kind of ripping them apart because he's thinking, if my wife is missing and no one's doing anything about it, why should I respect the laws? And then Wait, he, what is he ripping? Just other people's missing posters. Ah. Yeah. And then he slumps onto the ground and he starts crying. And first he sees shoes. And then he feels the rain stop, but he can see it's still raining. And he looks up and there's an umbrella covering for him, blocking out the rain. There's an officer standing there. Hello. You speak Mandarin? I'm Officer Zhang, I'm Chinese. Oh my God, thank you so much. I, I was just in there, my wife, sh she's been missing for two weeks now. I've been coming to the police station every single day nonstop and nobody cares. Please, you have to help me, Officer Zhang. I understand, but you have to recognize that the police here are severely understaffed. It's peak tourist season. We only investigate if there's strong criminal evidence. She's missing. What other evidence do you need? My visa ends in five days, and if I can't find her by then, I have to go back home. The police, they refuse to build a case, and I don't know what to do. I understand that you're anxious, sir, but that's not gonna help the case. How about this? What was your name? Henry? How about I start investigating tomorrow? Here, take my card. So the officer pats him on the arm and walks off. Henry's got no choice but to go back to his hotel room, which is honestly quite nice, might I add. Like I get that his wife is missing, but this is like, he's got a whole suite. He's got a living room. He's got a whole setup and he's got two bathrooms. He's got a bedroom and he's sitting there 
on the couch, getting drunk, smoking, watching the news, staring at a Polaroid of his wife. It's one that he took of her on the beach during this trip. She's facing away from the camera and she's wearing this white dress. It's blowing in the wind. I mean, she looks majestic and he looks so energyless, so hopeless. Exactly how I expect you to behave if I go missing, okay? What, am I taking too long with the ghost? No, no, no. You're giving me judgy eyes for my ghost, okay? <laughs> I think that he gets frustrated whenever I bake because I'm just... <laughs> Not that good with my hands. What are you making? Okay, so I'm gonna do these puff pastries. Here's my vision. And then in the middle, I saw this recipe on TikTok. This is not my creation. In the middle, I'm gonna put some strawberry jam mm. and then another ghost on top and then bake it. Oh, mm. yeah. So what, what is it? Like a... What is it? Um, like a jam feel pastry? Exactly. Mm. You know what I wanted to do? I was gonna go to the store and buy some bacon jam. Imagine how good that would have been. Imagine how good that would have been. What is a bacon jam? It tastes like bacon. It's like candied bacon, and then what? you make jam out of it. And then you put it That's in a- That's a thing? Yes, are you kidding? They even have like a habanero mango jelly. That would have been banging uh, in here, illegal. you don't think? Illegal? Illegally good. He falls asleep that night, and he wakes up on the beach with his wife saying, La Gong. <laughs> His wife is saying, babe, babe, and he's chasing after his wife whose back is to him and she's just running across the sand, the beachy waves and the wind, and then all of a sudden she screams, help me, and he wakes up from his nightmare. He's sweating all the way. He opens his eyes, jumps up, because his hand just touched another body next to him. There is a woman sleeping in the bed next to Henry. Which, seriously now, men can't grieve without companionship? Are you serious? That's what I was thinking, right? He starts poking the woman to wake up. Get up. Who the hell are you? It seems as if he doesn't even remember the festivities of last night. Like, maybe he was too drunk. Maybe he picked up a woman. Maybe he met at the bar, right? And she just says, oh, let me just sleep a little longer. Get up. He yanks her up. She turns to face him. What are you doing, Henry? D do you know me? Okay, fine. It's my fault. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have run away, but I'm back now, okay? And I said I regret it. What did you just say? She goes to hug him, but he throws her off of him. What the hell are you talking about? Who the hell are you? How do you know my name? Honey, are you still mad? I came back and I apologized profusely. Like, what more do you want from me? Henry runs up to open up the shades. He does not know this woman. What the hell is she talking about? Who, who the hell are you? How did you even get in here? How do, you, how do you know me? Answer me. Jesus Christ, Henry, what has gotten into you? You tell me what I am to you, huh? And she shows him their recent picture that they took on their beach during this wedding anniversary, and it is now her phone lock screen. So are you catching what I'm throwing down? So Henry doesn't recognize her. Yes, but all signs point to her being his wife. There's a picture of them cuddling together on the beach at this exact resort as her phone background. So... Yeah. Is Henry okay? No, Henry's f***ing confused. He's not having it. He calls Officer Zhang to the hotel immediately. Wait. Stat! Doesn't he have a picture of her? You say he was just looking at a photo of her? No face. Ah. Uh. Uh-huh. So Officer Zhang gets to the hotel. Someone is pretending to be my wife. Okay. Um, Ma'am, could I see your passport real quick? He inspects it, compares her picture to her, and it looks exactly like her. Okay, and uh, Henry, could I see your passport, please? Henry goes over to one of the nightstands, and in typical wife fashion, the woman rolls her eyes, walks over to the other side, oh my opens God. up the drawer, and there's his passport. <laughs> she hands it over to the cop, and listen, if I were an investigator, that tells me everything I need to know about this couple. That tells me oh this is God. a couple, okay? So the wife's name is Minji. Wait, 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 yes. so right now, 
Is it giving husbands losing his mind? Yeah, it's giving a husband is genuinely lost his freaking marbles. Okay. What's wrong with this man? Okay, okay. Yeah, it doesn't even make sense. I mean, everything about it, nothing makes sense. Mm. So Minji and Henry, they give me strong married couple vibes. Officer Zhang, who was very briefly sympathetic to Henry yesterday, is no longer feeling so kind. He's getting a little frustrated. I mean, the whole thing checks out. They both entered on the same date according to their passport. They both went through customs. They've got copious pictures of them having fun during this anniversary trip. So what's the big deal? Henry says, I'm telling you right now, Officer Zhang. Her passport, the photos, they've all been faked. Trust me, you just, you just have to trust me. Mindy is fed up. Will you please cut it out already? Ma'am, please, everyone, please calm down. Ma'am, where were you the last 15 days? I, I went to Muzhan Island. For all 15 days? Why didn't you call your husband? Why would I call him? The whole point of running away was to make him worry and make him actually care about me for once. Henry scoffs. This woman is lying! My wife hates socializing. She rarely goes out, let alone runs away for two weeks. She's a homebody. Wait, I'm so sorry. He doesn't have a photo of his wife? You know, Henry's not thinking like that, okay? Okay, you <sighs> be thinking like that, but he's not thinking like that. No, he doesn't have a photo. He does, he does. We'll see later. Oh, he does have photos? Yeah, but right now, <laughs> right now he's, uh, he's in a whole different dimension. <laughs> Okay, so this is the front, right? So I gotta cut out the eyes of my ghost. I gotta... Mm. See, anytime you bake, don't you just feel like you're evil? What? Because now I'm just... Honey, like I don't think that works like that. Mutilating a ghost right now. Casper is dying. Okay, let me take out the eyeballs. Ooh, cute. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? It looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, it's so cute. Okay, now we're just going to put those on top. Okay, so let me just cut the rest of these. Anyway. Yeah, do you he want me to do it? No, 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 no. Uh -huh. I, I'm a pro at this. Anyway, he's complaining this is not his wife. So the police officer is like, so you're claiming that this woman is impersonating your wife? Yeah. He turns to Minji, fake Minji, and says, well, he claims fake Minji. When did I marry my wife? Answer me, imposter. At what registry office did we petition to get married? You and I got married May 10th of last year at the Shanghai Civil Affairs Bureau. How did she and I meet? You and I met while diving. You saved my life. Before she and I got married, you taught me diving. We were both super into art. We both got into a car accident that we almost... Henry, you promised. You promised that you would take care of me for the rest of your life, and now it's only been a year? Like, what are you doing? The officer looks at the couple, hands the passports back to Minji. Sorry about the hassle, Mrs. Lee. Thank you. And he takes one look at Henry and almost wants to roll his eyes. You know what it's giving? It's giving husband doesn't want to admit wrong. Husband doesn't want to have real conversations about the real problems in the relationship. Would rather dig his feet in the sand, if it, even if it means drowning himself. Like the way even Minji is talking about it. It's like, you promised you'd take care of me and now you're pulling this shit. It's give, you know the, the question you used to ask? Yes. Like what if you wake up one day? Yeah. And you feel like your husband or wife has been replaced. Cloned by clone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you tell? Yeah. If it's the same person. But what if they don't even, he's saying they don't even look the same. <laughs> They're not even a clone. It's like me being replaced by someone that doesn't look like me. How would you react? Yeah. Would you call the cops? What would you do? I mean, it depends, right? Do they look better? <laughs> no, 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 no. Depends on what? <laughs> depends on. Uh... What? Answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the officer looks at him, kind of in disgust, and he walks off, and Henry is chasing after him. Wait, please, Officer Zhang, just wait. She's lying. She's lying. Digging up private information online is not that difficult. She could have just studied my life, studied my relationship with Minji. It's not that hard. Yeah? And all the private details, too? How would she have known that? Henry glances around, and there is a woman standing at the door. 
a hotel employee. You! He runs over, grabs her by the arm, drags her in front of the detective. She's the housekeeper of our room. She knows my wife. She met my wife. <laughs> Minji now walks out to that little hallway. Look, 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 tell the officer. Is she my wife or not? Henry is pointing at his wife who just looks heartbroken. The housekeeper looks terrified, but the manager of the hotel tells her, it's okay, just answer the question honestly. Wait, why is the housekeeper at the police station? Oh no, this is back in the hotel room. He called uh, them to the hotel. Uh oh. Yes, um, that's his wife. He even showed me pictures of her when she went missing and asked for help finding her. But I'm so confused. Why doesn't he recognize his own wife? Everyone is staring at Henry for a response. The officer translates to him what the housekeeper just said in Mandarin, and he starts flipping out. Are you guys all f***ing insane? How would I not recognize my own wife? How could I not know my own wife? Think about it. Use your brain. It's, it's not... It's not her on my phone. And he whips out his phone, goes to his photos. Wait, is the wife, new wife prettier? Is, is she pretty? She's very pretty. Then what does he come <laughs> You want to know? <laughs> okay, so he goes on his phone and through his camera roll, different places, different clothing, different settings, it's all her. Hmm. All her. Wait, 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 hold on. His phone? Yes. Oh. Pictures of her. Okay. He is now losing it. He walks up to Minji, grabs her by the arms. Who the hell are you? How the hell did you do this, huh? What do you want from me? Henry, what's wrong? Why are you being like this? You're scaring me. It's me, Minji. You, you come with me. Wow, these are very <clears throat> cute and very easy. I can't wait for Halloween. Are you guys excited? So he's like, you come with me. He starts dragging her and the cops are trying to stop him, but he pushes them off. My wife has a scar on her leg that only I know about. He throws her on the couch, rips up her skirt in front of the cops, no. in front of the hotel staff that are predominantly men. And there, underneath her clothes, is the scar. She slaps him across the face and runs off. And Officer Zhang is now stomping out of this hotel. Henry is following after him, still going on about how this woman is an imposter. And he turns around and says, you're lucky that we're not arresting you. Minji does not want to press charges. You should thank your wife for that. But she's clearly very scared of you. She stated that she's going to be staying at a different hotel tonight. And you should work on calming yourself down. No, you don't understand, officer. No, I do. I've already seen the hotel CCTV footage. Even with a mask and a hat on, the details match. And the police sent her visa report. This is her. And the pictures all match. So, you know, when you put in a visa, you got to go to like little tourist offices and like take pictures for yeah. very serious countries. Yeah, yeah, the pictures all match. So the officer tells him, I advise you to get your shit together. Even if she doesn't press charges, if you ever behave like that again, I can detain you and I will. And just like that, Henry was alone again. But this time, he's got a game plan. He would visit every single place that he went to with his wife, ask around to see if anybody remembered them. They even had a photo shoot on the beach together. So he went to that studio to ask for copies. But every single place he went to, all the workers are either outright ignoring him, closing down, or refusing to cooperate with him. Hmm. Suspicious, no? Mm-hmm. In the middle of his quest, his phone starts ringing and he's asking his friends back in China to find some pictures of his wife anywhere, online, from group gatherings and photo albums, but there's literally nothing. His wife was um, lived abroad for most of her life. Her friends were all abroad. She wasn't big on social media. She was just a very private person. There were no photos. So Henry hangs up and he tries to remember if he can um, think of one of her like best friend's names. He tries to add her on WeChat and he just waits to see if maybe he can message her old close friend of hers from abroad. He goes through his wallet, finds a receipt to a local bookstore, and he rushes over and asks the owner how long their store has the CCTV footage rolling. And she's chewing gum. What are you, like a lawyer? A cop? No, my wife is... Darling? And walking into the store is Minji in a red dress. And oh, oh, 
and she asks, are you following me right now? You know what? We'll talk about it later. Ma'am, how much is this book? Wait, the husband said, is the wife following me? No, like, no, the wife says. The wife is asking yeah. that? But the husband came in first. Yeah, but I guess she's running her errands. Like, why the hell oh. is he in a bookstore? And the, the lady's chewing gum, $15. What, did you guys like fight or something? <laughs> Ma'am, please, this is serious. My wife is missing. Can I please see the security footage? Yeah, you can, with the police officer next to you. You said your wife is missing? Isn't this your wife right here? Henry, isn't this enough, honey? Henry calls in Detective Zhang for one last favor. He shows up at the bookstore, they start going through the security footage, and sure enough, there is Henry and his wife walking in, but his wife is wearing a big floppy beach hat. I mean, since most of the time you can't even see her face, till she finally puts down a book on the counter, and she looks up directly at the CCTV footage. Right there, right there, right there! Zoom in, that's my wife, that's my wife! The owner zooms in and the pixels take forever. It's like one pixel at a time getting clearer and clearer and clearer until it's randomly HD, okay? And once it all slides all the way down into HD territory, it is Minji. The same girl? Same girl, Bro, standing there, God. purchasing her oh. book. Sir Henry, you've officially lost your marbles. This, this is the evidence that you wanted me to see so badly? Wait, so you can clearly tell it is her? Yeah. There's oh, yeah. no question about it. I'm telling you. And this was days ago. Even Wait. a non-Asian would be like, you see, that's, that's her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I said what I said. <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, mm-hmm, that's her. <laughs> Wearing a different outfit, new hat. That's mm -hmm. her. I didn't start thinking about my financial health until embarrassingly, embarrassingly late in life. And I thought, you know what? No big deal. Why do I need good credit? It's not like I'm trying to like, I don't know, buy stuff with my credit. Um, yeah, it was not a good idea. It's not fine. I found out the very first time I checked my credit score, the higher the number is better. You know? I didn't know that. And if you just found out that your credit score is bad or not the way that you want it to be, just like I did, then don't worry, do not panic, you can fix this. When I was trying to fix my credit score, I had no idea what I was doing and I had no idea if it was even gonna work. But thankfully, there's something better out there so that you don't have to go through what I did. Chimes Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is a better way to build credit. You can build your credit with purchases you already make with money you already have. There's no annual fee or credit check or interest necessary to get started. You can use the card just like a regular Visa card anywhere that Visa is accepted. There's no monthly fees, minimum balance, or overdraft fees. Chime wants to help you help yourself with no tricks or extra fees lurking around the corner. And this card comes with lots of perks. So with a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money up to two days earlier. And when, not if, but when you get hit with a sudden unexpected bill because there's always unexpected bills. If your pet has to go to the vet or if your tire suddenly goes flat, Chime will cover your back. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for Spot Me, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a purchase that exceeds your balance. You can overdraft up to $200 without fees with Spot Me. You can pay your friends through Chime too, so no matter what bank they use, and you can take your cash out of any of their over 60,000 ATMs with no fees. They have more ATMs than the top three banks combined. Your credit is a big deal, so build yours up with Chime. Just open up a Chime checking account with a $200 plus qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash baking. That's Chime.com slash baking. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank NA member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Henry says, there's no way, there's no way. Henry rips the mouse from the store owner and starts swiping through the footage, but as he's doing that, his head starts to ring and he sees memories of his wife, Minji, the one in the bookstore standing in front of him. So now his like memories are either being replaced by this fake wife, he doesn't know. He just has this crazy raging migraine and he tries to shake his head, reaches into his pocket, grabs out the pill case. Stop, honey, stop. The doctor told you to stop taking those pills. She snatches it away. What are you doing? Give those back to me. Henry gets up and starts wrestling Minji for the pill case. Officer Zhang intervenes, throws Henry up against the bookshelf and grabs the pills. And what the hell are these? Ah, uh, it's for my headaches. 
It's a Schedule II controlled substance. Where did you get these? I told you, it's just normal headache medicine. Henry won't answer. Officer Zhang rips out his handcuffs and threatens to take him to the police station, and Minji is the one that stops him. No, 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 please don't! Then tell me where he got these Henry has a neurological condition caused by years of deep diving in the ocean. Abnormal discharge of neurons can cause facial muscle spasm, amongst other things. It's from the pressure of the water. The doctor imported to help him treat his headaches. At first, it, it was super effective, but we never knew that there would be side effects, and we never knew it would be this bad. At first, it was forgetfulness, and then anxiety, and later he became bad-tempered and even delusional. He started sleepwalking, and he would wake up in the middle of the night screaming, and sometimes he would choke me. And Henry screamed, stop it, stop it, stop it! You are lying! Officer Zhang, you cannot believe her, she's lying! Minji tries to reason with Officer Zhang to let Henry go, and that Yes, he's caused a little bit of trouble, but they will make sure that he's, you know, gonna get back on better meds and they're gonna get him some help. But that's only triggering Henry more. He's like, stop acting like you know me. You don't know anything about me. Officer Zhang is fed up. Shut up. Can't you see that your wife is trying to help you right now? I will tell you for the last time, officer, my wife is missing. Officer Zhang gets down to Henry's level, since Henry is handcuffed. No, I will tell you one last time. Your request to file a missing persons report is rejected. Stop calling us. He's free to go. Henry walks out of there, leaves his wife, fake wife, goes to a local bar. So this is like an international bar where most people speak English. It's for a tourist. And apparently Henry is familiar with a bartender named Chris. Henry's getting drunk, watching the news. There's this high-powered attorney on the TV, Claire. She's talking about how she just won a court case and is talking about uh, the judgment to the press. Chris, what's going on on the news? Oh yeah, very complicated case. Several countries are involved. Police, mafia, it was the talk of the town. And that short-haired lady talking, is she a detective? Who, C Claire Ma? No, she's a big shot international lawyer. That woman has never lost a single case. Everyone thought that this would be her first loss, but she managed to fish out some new evidence by herself and bring it to court. Turn the tables. Lawyers can do that. Find their own evidence. I mean, the ones that want to win can, right? <laughs> Wait, isn't that her? And they look over to their left. Claire is playing pool by herself. <laughs> Henry walks over and offers her a drink. No thanks, just tell me what kind of trouble you're in. How did you know? She doesn't respond. My friend's wife went missing recently while they were traveling abroad, and someone is claiming to be his wife like an imposter, even framing him to look crazy. The police don't believe him, nobody believes him. What do you think he should do? Fly home immediately. What? Why? I mean, he still needs to find his wife. Can he prove that this new woman is an imposter? I mean, right now, no. And how long has your friend been married? Yeah, he should have just gone home with the wife. Yeah. Then all the friends could have known. Uh-huh. What? Yeah. Uh, we've been married a year. Only a year? In that case, it's not worth it. He should just leave. The length of the marriage doesn't mean anything about their love. Like, my friend wants to find his wife. Have you heard of the female tourist in the dressing room? The female tourist came here with her husband. They're having fun, went shopping. She decides to try on a new dress. Went into the changing room. He was right outside. She disappeared. Gone. The floor from underneath gave out. The police had no leads. Maybe the cops were in on it themselves. Either way, the man left the country in grief without his wife. A few years later, he was back here for a work trip. His co-worker took him to a club where they do sexy freak shows. And there was his wife, in a cage. But she was nothing but a torso. She took one look at him, no teeth. She tried to scream, save me. <laughs> You think you know marriage, but I know people, and there are some people here on this island 
that you never want to mess with. Claire puts down her pool stick and walks out of that bar. Henry is chasing after her. The whole movie is Henry chasing after people and getting ignored. I'm just going to be real with you, okay? <laughs> this guy's got stamina. Police, what if my friend wants to find his wife? What if he wants help from you? You know the rules. You're experienced. If we can just build a case, we, we can pay. We've got money. Money isn't the problem. He can find someone else. I don't take clients that don't trust me. And your friend doesn't trust me. Claire looks behind him and he turns around and he sees a ton of suspicious looking men that are staring at him behind pillars. It looks like what? they're part of some sort of gang. But when he turns back around to ask Claire what the hell she's looking at, she's gone. On her motorcycle, driving off. But it's fine, because he can just stalk her the next day. You know, he only has three days left of his visa now. He goes to find her at her office. Miss Ma, please, please, it, it's not my friend, it's me. You have to help me, I don't have much time. My visa ends in three days. Claire is about to slam the door on him, but something about him just intrigues her. She lets him in and starts making a coffee. I don't know how she did it. How would she able to even pull off something like this? Like fake being my wife? Probably not her. Uh, they probably did it. They? A powerful crime syndicate with well-devised plans and explicit targets. W w what are they after? Money? What kind of person was your wife? Gentle, kind, shy. She doesn't like being around people. She loves painting. How did you two meet? That's not that important. Of course it is. Your wife is the key to this case. Over a year ago, um, I was a diving instructor. I was in a pool. She was freaking out in her scuba gear. Her oxygen mask wasn't clamped on right. So I swam over, I hooked it on, helped her surface. She was just a trainee. She wasn't allowed to be in the water alone, but her instructor let her. I yelled at the instructor and um, I know it sounds cheesy, but have you ever felt like an arrow just shot through your heart? Like in that moment, it was just me and her and nobody else. So you guys fell in love at first sight. We get a flashback of Henry staring at his wife and it's not the Minji that we've seen all mm. along. And he says, hmm. it was, it was love at first sight. He helped her get dressed, like changed into a gown that they had, and he profusely apologized. I'm so sorry, that was all our fault. Uh, what was your name, Minji? You should have been supervised down there. Uh, do you remember the diving signals? Okay, so you do this when you ask them to help you surface. This signal means I can't breathe. Henry told Claire of how they bonded over their love for art, specifically Starry Night by Van Gogh, and he said, did you know that there's a starry night at the bottom of the sea? I can show you one day. And the two exchange numbers. And for a whole month, Henry was texting Minji, telling her to look at the stars, look at this, look at that. She never responded for an entire month. He was about to give up, but he said one last shot. There was a Van Gogh exhibit and he wanted to take her there. She said yes. Bro, this is crazy because I remember the Van Gogh uh, exhibit in China. Yeah. Was oh. it here too? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, this kid. My cousin Jen Jen went. <laughs> I was like, do you want to hang out this weekend? And she said, no, I got to go to the Van Gogh exhibit. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. I mean, fine, I guess. I could just Google it for you, but that's okay. <laughs> anyway, that's how they started dating. And one day, they're in the car coming back from an artsy-fartsy date when Minji screams, oh my God, she won! Who won? My best friend, Mandy. In present day, Claire is like, who the hell is Mandy? Her one and only friend. They met while studying abroad, and I think Mandy is some sort of play director. I never got to meet her. Honestly, I think she hates me. One time, Henry came to visit Minji with flowers, and Minji was on the phone, not knowing that he was there, she was painting, and she was talking on the phone with Mandy saying, no, but I trust him. I trust him, don't worry. And you know what? I trust him as much as I trust you, Mandy. And I also trust my own judgment, so you don't have to keep worrying about me. Minji always wanted the two to be friends, but Henry told Claire, I just tried to add her on WeChat last night, and she blocked me. Uh -oh. And why does she not like you? 
Minji comes from a very well-off family. So compared to her, I'm a nobody. Okay. And what else do you know about Mandy? Uh, she has a tattoo on her chest. It's her profile picture on WeChat. It's angel wings with an M in the center. Aside from that, I've only seen one picture of her. It was in the car that Minji had told him that Mandy had won, right? And she showed him a group picture of everyone in the play celebrating their win, and that is when they got into a car accident. It was bad, yeah. So he didn't even get a good look. He never wanted to see the picture after that because it's just, you know, bad memories. Three days after the accident, they filed their marriage license. It was the best decision he ever made. The past year has been the happiest year of our lives. It was honestly the best thing I could have done. Is this photo the one of her turned around? This Polaroid of Minji at the beach? Is this the only one that you have of her? This is the only one I have. And the other pictures on your phone. That unknown woman is in all of them. I've never seen that woman before. Mr. Lee, as your lawyer, I need things from you. I need absolute trust. No secrets, no lies. Can you do that? Are you gonna help me? Let's go to the studio that you did the photo shoot in. I've been there. I got nothing from them. The second thing I want from you is do as I say, no questions asked. Here, take the keys, you're driving. So they get to the photo shoot studio and what do you know? The studio is moving and they're looking to lease out their spot. But one of the rooms has a broken window and they're complaining about how the photographer scammed them and like stole all their equipment and gear and the computers and that's why they're moving. It's interesting. It's very interesting. So they're kind of back to square one because the photographer has everything and they have no idea where the photographer is. But not all the way square one. Claire and Henry now have this goal. If they find the photographer and they can get the pictures, everything is solved. Bada bing, bada boom. Everything is cleared up. In the meantime, Claire asks Henry about their whole trip, everything, anything that seems even inconsequential she wants to know about. So start with the night that she vanished. Henry had made reservations for a romantic dinner on a table near the beach, like on the beach. And there was gonna be fireworks that night. It was carnival weekend on the island, so there would be tons of tourists, tons of parades all night long, people in masks celebrating bonfires. But when he walked in on Minji in the bathroom, she said that she didn't wanna go. What, why? I'm just not feeling too well. I think I just need some time alone. Henry tells Claire that he thought that was strange. It was really out of character for Minji, but he thought maybe she had a gift or some sort of surprise set up for him and that's why she said that. So he let her be, he left for the bar and she agreed she would meet him for dinner way later. He's getting drunk, he's texting Minji nonstop like, hey, are you sure you're still showing up? Like, do you wanna meet at the bar first? Do you wanna meet at the, the beach? Like, where do you want, do you want me to come pick you up? And before he's about to leave, the bartenders drag him up onto the bar and they start forcing more shots down his throat until he doesn't remember anything else and wakes up in the bathroom. Moonlight shining in on him and he's freaking the fork out. He gets up, fireworks are going off, he can see through the bathroom window. He was late to meet her for the dinner reservations. So he runs over to the beach, she's not there. He runs to the hotel, she's not there. He asks the front desk, they said she already left earlier that night to go meet up with him. <gasps> wow, they got uh, chubby. Wow. Wow, they got chubby. Oh, that looks wow, good. Wow, that looks fantastic. That looks so good. Wow. Okay, here's one. Mm. Well, you gotta get the jam. The jam is mm. lava right now. Oh, okay? It's so good. It's so hot. Mm. Mm. It's really good though. Mm. These are very easy, like potluck. And Henry thought about it and it just didn't make sense. Claire went to snoop around in their hotel room with Henry and he says, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Please, like, tell me you don't think that she left too. Everyone's saying that she ran away. Tell me you don't think that. Of course I don't think that. She opens up the closet and she says, no artist leaves their instruments. So all of her paintbrushes had been left behind. Mm. If they plan on leaving for good, those types of habits do not change. Mm -hmm. Claire opens up her laptop. You want another one? Mm. Damn. No, I, have uh, nice. I have some suspicions. What are you, no. I'm not gonna say it, but hmm. it's interesting. 
How often are your suspicions correct? Uh, 20%. <laughs> That's a pretty bad track record, no? Yeah. <laughs> Claire opens up her laptop and starts showing him the clip of the CCTV footage from the bookstore. Look closely. You said the books on her nightstand were the ones that she bought. They don't match what she bought at the bookstore. And if you guys only went once before she vanished, that doesn't make any sense. What the hell? Not only that, when we walked in the hotel lobby together, did you see the hotel manager? He was wearing a pair of Lotus glasses. Those cost almost a thousand dollars for a pair of glasses. What hotel manager has that kind of money? What? This is a tourist luxury resort. You guys booked the most expensive villa and spent extravagantly. Also, you have a neurological condition, so the normal pills that you have became the easiest way to frame you. You most likely left your pills out on the counter when you left the hotel room with your wife. He came in looking for a way to get the job done. You gave him that way. I imagine they probably slipped something into the alcohol in your hotel room so that you would knock out if you resorted to a glass of whiskey at night. And slowly, they carried out their master plan. Came in, taking pictures, scanning all the documents, passports, necessary, photoshopping, and then replacing all the photos in your phone. I imagine they went to all the stores beforehand to alter the footage, to pay off witnesses, and finally, when everything was ready, all you needed to do was wake up. As for the police, their systems are at least 10 years behind the other police systems, so their records are not that easy to hack, and that's if they don't already have someone working on the inside. But you think they paid off all the people in the hotel staff that think it's my wife? No, they don't need to do that. It's easy to do that. All that fake girl had to do was sit at the lobby. And the next time you walked into the hotel, the fake wife sitting by the lobby would see you and say, Honey, wait up. You would keep walking because you don't think that's for you. And she would rush towards you and disappear to where the elevators are. Everyone in the lobby, every employee would just imagine that you two are together. She looks the part of your wife, she acts the part of your wife. Even if you had no idea what she was doing, others would put these details together and just assume that this is your wife. That's most likely why the housekeeper identified her as your wife. And when you were showing her pictures about your wife and saying she was missing, she most likely just didn't care. Henry hears a faint noise in the background, runs to the door, looks out the peephole. It's fake Minji in a red dress, okay? Uh -oh. Side note, red is really this woman's color. He sees her walking down the hallway, heels click clacking. He grabs Claire, pushes her into one of the rooms. It's the woman that's impersonating my wife. We can't let her see you. Uh -oh. The door opens. Honey. She literally says, La Gong. <laughs> She's just chilling. She don't give a shit. No. What the hell do you want? Honey, let's call it a truce. I reserved a table for us near the beach for dinner. Let's have fun, let's get drunk, and we can start fresh tomorrow. Henry doesn't move, and fake Minji looks over at the coffee table and sees a woman's planner and a purse on the couch. <laughs> what the hell? Hello, Miss Lee. Claire pops out of the restroom. I'm Claire Ma, I'm Henry's attorney. Since when do attorneys work in hotel bathrooms? <laughs> well, stranger <clears throat> things have happened. Now you two catch up. I should get going. Henry runs over out the hallway to bring Claire her bag. And in the hallway, he says, you can't just leave, I need help. Do you want to get to the bottom of it or not, Henry? Fake or not, she's still your wife. Claire places a little container in his hand. Inside would be like some sort of Bluetooth device that they can communicate with. Mm. Cameras and an earpiece. Henry dresses up full suit and tie. Fake Minji comes in a ball gown and they walk over to the beach together to have a candlelit dinner. It's a restaurant though, so there's other people. And he picks her up and spins her around wooing her before he sits. It's a James Bond movie. Honey, I have to say you look so handsome tonight. Thank you. And I have to say, what the hell do you people want? <laughs> what are you saying? Are you still mad at me? Can't you just be more honest? Is the girl me? weird? Is she acting weird? No. Oh, you think she's acting normal? Yeah. Even though, even though the husbands keep saying, what the hell is wrong with you? Well, now she starts acting weird. Oh. Yeah. And she says, honest. That's what you want? Fine. Let's play truth or dare. Which one will you choose? Are you sure you want to do this? Of course. It's our first wedding anniversary. They clink their wine glasses, and he says, keep up this act if you want, but I just want to know where my wife is. She? Your wife? 
I'm right here. Unless you're thinking about somebody else. Look, I have money. Everything has a price. Name your price. Money can even buy the devil's soul. What kind of devil? I hired the kind of attorney that wins every single case that she takes on, so you're in for a rude awakening. Name your price now. Meanwhile, Claire is listening to him calling her the devil, but like, that's another story for another day, okay? Um, <laughs> and he tells her that Claire, the attorney, can take away everything precious to her if she keeps up this act of pretending to be his wife. That's so funny, honey, because I actually hired someone too. Dean Yang of the Anning Mental Hospital. And I asked him if a mental patient acts violently during withdrawal of medication, what should his family do? And you know, his answer surprised me. He said in this country, a patient's next of kin has full custody when that patient is placed at a mental hospital. Which means, sweetie, if you were to have a psychotic episode, as your wife, I'm entitled to have you hospitalized against your will, and I will get custody over all your assets. Henry is about to flip out, but he hears Claire's voice in his ear. Don't react, she's bluffing. I didn't believe Dean Yang at first, but I contacted Officer Zhang to confirm. And the police wouldn't lie, right? It's true. Stop f***ing around and name your price. Honey, I will make sure that the hospital treats you like a precious baby. You have nothing to worry about. Henry rips her hand off of his face and he says, you should know I'm not the nice guy that you think I am. This could end very badly for both of us. Oh, babe, I don't care if you're good. I don't care if you're bad. I want every little bit of you. And something about this sends Henry off the ronkers because he grabs her arms and says, I could kill you right now, right here. And that would be exactly what I want. She grabs his hand, puts it on the scar on her leg. You don't get it, do you, Henry? I enjoy torturing you. I get off on this. He throws her on the ground in front of the whole restaurant. She even grabs the tablecloth to pull all the plates down with her, and he's standing over her in anger. And she suddenly says, Honey, please, I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. Please, I'm sorry. Don't be upset. Don't hurt me. Get up. Get up right now. And she's still laying on the ground. Please don't hit me. Stop pretending. I said, get up. She said, ah, don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> he tries to physically get her up, but the waiters pull him off and Claire runs in, but it's too late. He gets sent to the police station and Claire's got to go pick him up, bail him out. And in the car, he's ranting. That woman is crazy. Yeah, well, I don't think a judge would believe that. You're the one lying to the police, taking pills, being violent. Who's crazy? You or her? She wanted you to beat her, and you did. So She's she... not very bright, huh? No. The guy's getting played left and right. Oh, yeah. So she won tonight. What about what she said at that restaurant? Wasn't that recorded? That proves she's not my wife, doesn't it? None of it will be of much use. None of it proves she had anything to do with your wife's disappearance. So what do we do? What's our next move? We find the real Minji Lee. Do you think they know where Minji is? I don't think so. If I were a kidnapper, wouldn't it be easier to ask you for ransom than elaborately set you up, send you to a mental hospital, and then take control over your assets pretending to be your wife? It's so complicated. So you think they're bluffing? The problem is, they're in charge of the situation right now. And I'm afraid that if your real wife turns up, they'll make her disappear for good. Henry starts freaking out and Claire notices that a truck has been following them all night long. And it's really shady. So all they can do is go back to Claire's office, and that is where Henry falls asleep for the night. The hotel doesn't even seem safe. The next morning, he wakes up from another nightmare of not being able to save his real wife, and the two get in the car, Claire and Henry, and Claire starts driving like a crazy person trying to get the man off her tail. The shady car that's been watching them all night? Mm -hmm. And honestly, she succeeds, even though she's driving like a bright red Ford pickup truck. Okay, and now she starts tailing that guy. It's like a big buff American dude. Hmm. Yeah, uh-huh. And he goes straight to this shady drug den. That's what it looks like, an HQ of sorts. They break inside and they find copies of foreigner licenses, a stack of Chinese passports, and Henry is going through all of them looking for his wife's, but Claire's too busy staring at the wall. It's bad. It's like one of those detective control boards with all the red strings. And in the center is a picture of Henry and Minji and a bunch of newspaper writings about them. The newspaper clippings all read. 
Xing Chuan Group president and wife die in car crash, leaving everything to daughter and heir. What? Ninji is the daughter and heir to this massive business. She's like a chebo, filthy rich. And this was old news, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So it seems like whoever did this, whoever made his wife disappear, has been trailing them. Knew they were coming into the country. Knew she was filthy loaded. Got Didn't it. even just think, oh, this is just another like wealthier Chinese couple. They're like, no, this is the golden egg. Henry's phone starts ringing, but Claire prevents him from picking it up. They see on the computer screen, like one of the computer screens in the den. Den, Henry's location is pinging. That means they're calling him to find out where he is, and he's inside of their lair. So now they gotta run out the back, and there's men in machine guns, trucks chasing after them, waiting to like just shoot them down. And as they're running, they even they like drive up to this lighthouse. Now it's nighttime, and they've been running all day. And Henry's like, "What the hell are you doing? We have to go to the police." Are you an idiot, Henry? They've probably gotten rid of all the evidence by now. And what? What if they have someone on the inside, a police officer working for them? Then what? What are you gonna do? My visa ends in two days. I have to do something before then. I cannot go back home like this. Henry, what else aren't you telling me? What do you mean? I told you everything. Claire pulls out a picture that she ripped from the wall in the den. It's of Henry at a casino. You're a gambler. Why didn't you tell me? Did you and your wife fight about this? Tell me right now. No. This is unrelated to the case. A woman thinks that she married a decent man. Finds out that he's a gambler. She has no choice but to retaliate. She wants to create chaos, to torture you, to teach you a lesson. So she runs away. Enough! She would never do this to me. Then explain this. Her return flight home was canceled. There were large sums of money withdrawn from her bank before she went missing. How do you explain that? I don't know. I don't know. But it's impossible. She would never do something like this to me. What are you trying to hide right now? What are you afraid of? Were you afraid that I'm gonna find out? I said enough. Henry runs off, but ends up coming back to the lighthouse with a beer, an I'm sorry beer for Claire. Before I met my wife, I was a loser. Honestly, since the day I was born, I was a loser. I was born in a small town by the sea. My dad was an alcoholic. My mom played cards. It's like my whole family were zombies, just sleepwalking through life. But once I was old enough, I moved to Shanghai by myself. I took on as many odd jobs as possible until I finally became a swim instructor. Then eventually, I learned how to dive. But even then, after my shitty rent in the cockroach-filled apartment, I could barely afford to live. There was no way for me to make money except, except if I gambled. Occasional losses didn't stop me. I was actually quite lucky at gambling. I made enough to pay rent and more. But then, I couldn't stop. I became addicted. The lifestyle, the everything about it was exciting. It wasn't even about winning anymore. It was just everything. I took out loans, loan sharks. I gambled it all away. I was getting beat nonstop. It was bad. And then one day, I wanted to end my life, and my roommate stopped me. The next day, I met Minji, and I fell in love. For the longest time, I didn't want her to know. I didn't want her to be pressured or burdened by this. But eventually, when she started talking about getting married, I told her the truth, and I told her, "I get it if you don't want to be with me anymore." But instead, she paid off my debt, and she said, "As long as you're starting new, and you'll never gamble again." So that's what I did. I never stopped feeling guilty about it, though. But I never gambled ever again. I helped run her parents' company, and the business has been really good. Then why does your loan shark keep calling you? So she noticed that throughout this whole time, he keeps getting calls from just K is the mm -hmm. name, giving loan shark. She's putting two and two together, probably to try and reel me back in. Look, I didn't mean to keep this from you. It's just part of my past that I chose to let go a while back. I promise you, I trust Minji with my life. She would never ever try to take revenge on something like this. That's not who she is. This was in our past. You have to trust me. The next morning, it is now one day away from his visa expiring. Claire comes to meet him, and she says, "I've got good and bad news. Bad news? There's a guy named Peter. Peter went to a detention center when he was 14 for manslaughter. He's been charged with multiple violent felonies since then, but there was never enough evidence to convict him. He's been free ever since. But many foreign tourists have gone missing on this island. They were never found. Their overseas properties were all promptly listed for sale not too long after their disappearance, all by associates and family members of Peter. The properties would sell, and the money would be transferred overseas. 
Mm-hmm. Saying maybe this is like a whole gang that's involved. That targets rich, wealthy people. Makes them disappear. Uh-huh. Somehow obtains their assets. Okay. Yes. Good news, I found the photographer. His name is Hazel. He has the original photos of you and Minji, and he's willing to testify if you pay him $200,000. Huh. Yeah, okay, that's very good news. Look, as your attorney, I do have to tell you something. I suggest that you fly back home. Every second that you're on this island, you're in grave danger. No, what about Minji? When I was at rock bottom, my wife helped me. I'm not gonna give up on her. Your visa expires tomorrow. What are you gonna do? I know, I booked the latest flight out tomorrow, and if I still can't find her, at least we can try and gather all the evidence for the police to file a case, and then I will renew my visa and be right back the minute that it's renewed. Okay. So later that day, Claire drives him to the beach to meet up with the photographer, Hazel. The photographer hands them a USB, and they check the photos at this, like, surf club. So he's, like, importing them into his laptop. Or, like, stuck the USB in. I don't think he imported it. And he says, it's her, it's her! As Henry is flipping through the pictures, a man walks behind them and he looks like a scuba diver. And he asks, do you guys know her? Excuse me? She joined my group and she never returned. She rented some of my gear. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? The wedding photos? Yeah, like the wife, the real wife. Oh, uh, okay. Do you see the photo? Did yeah. You? Oh, it, it's not the red dress girl? No. Okay. Yeah, for sure. She rented gear and never returned it. Henry closes the laptop. Impossible. Wrong person. What? And the diver scoffs. Okay, whatever, dude. And Henry says, now that we have the evidence, let's go to the cops. Hurry, let's go. Let's see what they have to say. But the whole ride to the police station, Claire wants to know, did Minji go diving? There's no way. She wouldn't dive in an open water alone. What if you're wrong about her? What if she did go diving? I'm telling you, it's impossible. She would never go diving alone. Claire pulls over to the side of the road. What else are you not telling me about this? I have reason to believe that Minji is the one behind all of this, that she didn't disappear and she wanted to leave and maybe even frame you for her disappearance. I will tell you for the last time, Claire, there is nothing I'm hiding from you and Minji would never do this. Did you wrong her in some sort of way? Oh, let's Wait, not do what this. what is she suspecting right now? She's suspecting that he fucked her over and she gone girled him is faking her disappearance and oh. making him look suspicious. Okay. And she just wants to know the truth. That's the only way she can help. Mm. Got it. But why would she do that? <laughs> what do you mean? Gone girl him. That's why she's asking, like, did you do something wrong to her? Mm. Okay. Like, were you gambling again? Yeah. So she wants to get revenge? She's mad at you? I've told you everything, Claire. What more do you want? Are you going to keep driving or not? Claire doesn't respond, and this guy's just got issues. He says, no? Then let's get out, photographer. We're going for a walk. So he's like, I'm going to walk to the police station with the photographer. I don't need you, Claire. Henry gets out with the photographer. Claire gets out, and she says, when I signed on to be your attorney, do you remember what you promised? As your lawyer, I need the truth. Enough. You're no longer my attorney. You're fired. Do you hear me? And then, boom. Uh, he got hit? Blood splatters everywhere. The photographer next to them was shot in the chest. What? Blood is splurting out of his chest. He grabs onto the briefcase with the USB. Henry tries to wrestle it from him, but more shots are fired. He has to let go. And he and Claire have to go behind the truck and hide. Wait, I'm so confused. They were standing there, and who's shooting at them? From the woods, someone. A mass shooter. They, they trying to kill the photographer? Yeah. For the photos? Yeah. Henry tries to walk over to grab the briefcase, but another shot is fired. They hide below the car and they see an armed guard opening up the briefcase and pulling out the SUV and pocketing it. The SUV. SUV. <laughs> SUV. The USB. SUV. I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> well, that was weird. <laughs> they pull out the UFO. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And he pockets it. And now they finally have the chance to run. They start running through the woods, but they end up getting separated. So when Hen Henry finally escapes the gunned man, he runs back to his hotel, starts opening up all the drawers, finding his passport, his cash, and behind him he hears mm -hmm. slow heels. He slowly turns. It's fake Minji. Wait, who's at the hotel? Henry, by himself. What is he doing? I don't know if he's trying to go home. I don't know what he's trying to do. Uh-huh. 
And fake Minji is standing with another iconic red dress holding a glass alcohol bottle. And she's smiling, tapping it. He tries to walk away. Get away from me. Don't come any closer. Stay where you are, you imposter. And she starts laughing. And he's got this raging headache. He starts grabbing for his pills. And she says, oh, is this what you're looking for, honey? Okay, I give up, crazy lady. Whatever you want, I will pay. Just give me the pills. Just tell me. Who says we want your money? Then what the hell do you want? Minji smashes the glass bottle on her head until she's bleeding. But her demeanor is calm. Wait, she's smacking herself? Yeah, on the head. What? It's psychotic. And she says, I already told you. I want every bit of you. Henry throws her on the floor and starts choking her. But the doors slam open. Police come in, tase him on the ground. The last thing he sees before he gets up is fake Minji, blood streaming down her face, smiling. Henry wakes up strapped to an operation table. Mr. Lee, you're awake. Do not panic. Don't try to move. I'm Dr. Kim. You were in the middle of an acute episode. Please, you have to listen to me. That's not my wife. She's a liar. She's trying to kill me. Please. Breathe. Breathe. It'll be okay. It's gonna be all right. Don't get too excited. They stab him with a needle, and the door slams open, and in walks Officer Zhang. He was the masked gunman shooting at the photographer. What? The big buff guy that was trying to get them at the drug den? He walks in as well, along with fake the, the Minji. The big American dude? Yeah. Along with fake Minji. Okay. Oh my god, they're trying to kill me, doctor! They're trying to kill me! The doctor hands Minji a piece of paper and she signs off. The operation will start in 30 minutes. They start shaving off all of his head while he's screaming bloody freaking murder and we just see tears streaming down his face. He was probably giving a paralytic because, I mean, he's still awake, just like all the way strapped up, okay? And I don't know if they operated on him yet. I don't think he has, but he's gonna be operated on. He's alone in the waiting room operated when a nurse- on what? Oh, a lobotomy. <laughs> Lobotomy? Like, it's so random, yeah. He's gonna get a fucking lobotomy, bro. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah. You tell me. You tell me. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So they have like a hammer ready? Yeah, like an ice pick and everything. <laughs> yeah, what? yeah. They got a little chopstick ready to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a nurse walks in and it's Claire. A nurse walks in? Yeah, and she's dressed up as a nurse. Claire? Claire, the attorney, is dressed up as a nurse and walks into the empty operating room where he's waiting. And he's strapped up. And, and Henry's like, Claire, oh my god, thank god, I knew you were gonna come. Please, you have to call the police, they're gonna kill me. It's useless now, Henry. There's a nationwide warrant for my arrest. They're framing me for the photographer's murder. The doctor is bought off by the group. They will perform a frontal lobotomy on you. The game is over, we lost. Aren't you some sort of big shot attorney? What are you trying to say to me, that it's over? This time is different. I knew they were powerful, but I didn't anticipate that they would have everyone in their pocket. Well, what the hell do we do now? You can't just leave me here to die. Unless we find the real Minji, that's the only way that we can turn the tables on them. Henry, where is Minji? What? Drop the act, you know where she is. She's been missing, we've been looking for her. Did you see her the night she disappeared? Of course I didn't. I told you I left the hotel room and I was, I was drunk. I didn't get to the, the restaurant. You're still acting. If you didn't react the way you did at the dive shop, I wouldn't have thought you were playing games. So we get a flashback to the odd interaction at the dive shop, remember? Where the guy was like, hey, she, that lady rented my gear and never came back. Mm -hmm. Well, Claire went back and investigated, got a receipt. Minji had signed off on two sets of diving gear, one in her size, one in Henry's size. The day of her vanishing, you told the bartender you would give your wife a surprise during the fireworks show, but that's not what you told Minji, isn't it? You told her that you were meeting a client for work and you would meet her at the dock later that night. I was at the bar all night. Everyone at the bar can testify to that, Claire. They only thought you were there. You went up to the bar, made sure everyone could see you, got drunk, drank beer after beer until you were throwing up in the bathroom, made sure that they see you walk all the way into the bathroom, but instead you went out the bathroom window. You went all the way to the dinner spot where Minji was waiting for you and you had 80 minutes. You wanted to show Minji the starry night in the ocean. You guys went into the dive together, but only you came back. 
Then you got rid of all of her stuff, climbed back into the bathroom, and I must admit, it was a risky plan, but you were plotting it for a really long time, so it worked. I mean, if she knows everything, what is she, what is she asking this? Bullshit! What an absurd theory, Claire. But you left something, and I found it. The easiest thing to overlook, an old habit. A lot of divers start their diving watch before each dive to help them keep a log of all of their dive times. There is evidence that you dove the night of the murder, the night that she went missing. What do you mean? Like the watch was left there? No, he like turned it on and recorded a dive. On For the night that he was so drunk at the bar. Oh, okay. There was a dive recorded. Oh. You went on a dive with Minji. Look, I believe you meeting Minji at your job was coincidental, but everything that happened afterwards was not. You wanted her money. Your friends told you who that girl was, didn't they? You knew her parents had died and she inherited billions. You studied art to have similar interests as her. You reeled her in. Even the car accident, you staged it to give you something to bond over. You guys got married three days afterwards. You said so yourself. Hmm. Stop it! Stop it right now! I don't care what you did, Henry. Do you not get that? I just want my name cleared. I just want to live. And finding Minji's body is our only hope. Trust me, even if they put you on trial now, you will have nothing to worry about. I will get you out. Dead man don't talk. Suicide, accident, adultery, whatever you want to make it look like, I can make it look like that. I just need my name cleared. So tell me where your wife's body is. I have no idea, Claire. They're going to start operating on you. You will be their piece of meat. Whatever they want to do with you, they're gonna do it. Are you really gonna give up like this? I don't care what you did to Minji, but don't take me down with you. So last chance, Henry. They're about to come in. Tell me. The alarms start going off and Claire is screaming. Henry has to tell her. And he says, the, the lighthouse, Moshe lighthouse. The lighthouse? She lets go of him and the alarms stop. I left her alone there. I had no choice. She kept saying she loved me, but she only cared about money just like everybody else. And we get a flashback of his loan shards shaking him down for money. He borrowed millions to gamble again. They even came to Minji and she refused to give them another dime. First of all, she was heartbroken that he would go back on his promise to never gamble. But secondly, she told him straight up, if I gave you another dime, I would be harming you. You would never learn. That night, Henry went to go steal money from his own wife's safe, but he came across a document. She was gonna file for divorce. He went up to the rooftop to smoke and got drunk. While he was half drunk, he got a news alert. Missing woman presumed dead. All assets went to next of kin. I had no choice, Claire. If she had agreed to help me, none of this would have happened. So this anniversary trip was all planned so you could kill your wife and inherit her money? We see Henry setting up Minji's entire home in this romantic candlelit dinner. She comes home and he says, look, I'm gonna change. You know, I am. I'm gonna quit. I told the loan sharks that I would pay them back in installments and we're gonna put this behind us and move on. Our wedding anniversary is next week. I wanna change. I book some tickets. We're gonna go to the beautiful island and we're gonna go see the starry nights. Henry tells Claire, Minji had no heart, no conscience. Did our wedding vows even mean anything to her? To support each other for richer or for poorer? You're shameless, Henry. How's that shameless? Wanting to be successful and rich? How? I did this all to be worthy of her, to make money for her. What is wrong with that? I was born disadvantaged. I was born to a poor family. Claire runs out of the operating room with the door open and Henry starts looking around. And that is when he realizes this is not a normal operating room. The alarms were going off. Why were they no longer ringing? Why was there an old TV in the corner? He manages to untie himself and he runs out and he starts going through this maze-like hallway of operating rooms, but none of the doors open until finally he gets to the main hallway door, pushes it open, and he's outside. But when he looks behind him, it's not a hospital. It's a little shed in the courtyard of a building. So all four sides are surrounded by another building. Mm. He tries for all the doors because the only way out is to go through the building. And finally one opens. And he walks in, and there's a board with his picture, and next to it are a set of wigs, and standing in front of them is everyone. The photographer that is not dead anymore, the fake wife, Chris, the bartender, the American from the den, 
And then Claire. The hotel lobby manager's even there. Claire walks out and she rips off a skin-colored piece of fabric from her chest, and we see an M tattooed with angel wings. Ah! That is not Claire, it's Mandy, Minji's best friend, the play director. Oh my god. We get a flashback of Mandy getting bullied abroad. <sighs> she climbed up to the boarding school. Ma Mandy getting bullied? Yeah, Claire Mandy, getting oh, okay. bullied abroad when she's like in maybe fifth grade. Uh -huh. She went to the rooftop of her boarding school ready to jump with her little teddy bear and we hear Minji's voice. You know, if you jump now, you're gonna be ugly. But you're so pretty right now. I would hate for you to look ugly. Why do you care? You don't even know me. I do now. I'm Minji. I'm Mandy. Minji helps Mandy off and the two of them start dorming together while they're abroad. I mean, they're best friends. Both of them are super artistic. They bond like that, but Mandy is very insecure. She's got scars on her chest from all the bullying. So Minji draws her her chest tattoo to cover it up. And she loves it so much that the day they graduate on her 18th birthday, she gets an actual tattoo of it. Minji is there supporting her every step of the way. Even when Mandy does her first play, Minji is there. Until finally, Minji says, I'm gonna move back to China. Mandy was gonna stay in the US. Her whole life had been set up. She was winning awards. She was directing plays. And they're both adults, professionals, focused on their own careers. But they kept in touch all day, every day. The night Minji disappeared, she texted Mandy that she was finally seeing the starry night in the waters while on vacation. She was so excited. Mandy was worried and she texted, stay safe and text me as soon as you get back. That text never came. She tried calling over and over, her phone didn't answer, and eventually the phone just went straight to voicemail, and Mandy just had this gut feeling that something wasn't right. She flew to the island, and there it was at the police station. A missing persons poster for Minji. So all of Minji's closest friends from abroad flew in. They were all part of Mandy's theater team. They tried to get the police involved, but they all said, no body, no case. Fake Minji, Officer Zhang, Claire, they were all friends of Minji, and they didn't know for sure that Henry was involved in her disappearance, but it just didn't make sense. Z, who played Officer Zhang, wonders if they can just ask Henry out, right? And fake Minji says, what, you think he's gonna tell us the truth? Did you see him at that police station? His act is clean. He's planned it all, very clearly. Claire says, call the crew. We need the whole crew. We're gonna put on our own show. <laughs> I mean, I have to say. Yeah. Real friends, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Real friends. Real friends. I can't even get a friend to come out to dinner with me, and you're telling me these friends be flying all across the world? Yeah. And commit to all of this? Wow. Committing little crimes? Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm sure, I feel like there's got to be some easier ways, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I can think of a couple ways to get <laughs> to, to talk mm -hmm. much, much quicker. Like torture? Like a knife attached to an at-home drill bit up the rectum? <laughs> I mean, I guess they can't do that because what if he's innocent, right? Exactly. Exactly. So they gaslit him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which honestly, arguably, I mean, this is truly, wow, so much gaslighting. Yeah. So good. So good. Anyway. Wow. The others flew in to meet with them and they created a drug den to study the whole plot. Get in character. Fake Minji had been in an abusive relationship before and she wanted to do this for Minji, for Mandy, for herself, for everyone. She let them scar her leg so she could play the part. They cut Mandy's hair, helped cover up her tattoo. They ran around play paying all the locals to make sure everything went smoothly. They had blood sacks to be quote, shot at. You know, everything, even the photographer's death, that was all planned, it was all fake. They even created this hospital set, down to the clothes that they were gonna put Henry in. Mandy tells all of this to Henry. Bald head Henry, who's crying slash laughing. And fake Minji comes out and throws her wedding ring at him and says, sorry, I just hate sorry assholes like yourself. Unfortunately, we can't stay married. Henry grabs a pair of scissors and screams, I'm gonna kill you, but right as he says that, real cops show up. He gets handcuffed and driven to prison. At the same time, a team of divers are sent near the lighthouse and there was this cage in the water. People would go because that's the perfect spot to see Starry Night, so the cage was dropped in there. And um, the Starry Night is actually not stars. It's fish swimming in circles and they create like the Starry Night. Mm. And um, 
Minji's body was locked in the cage. Yeah, so he swam in the cage with her and told her to look up. And when she was so mesmerized by Starry Night, he swam out and locked up the cage. Dang. And now sitting in prison, Mandy comes to see him one last time. Do you regret it? Yeah, I regret not figuring you out earlier so I could kill you too. You killed the person that loved you most. And I hope this will make you regret what you did. Mandy pulls out a sonogram. Minji was gonna show it to him while they were on the dive. She even put in a waterproof little lanyard and she told Mandy about it. She was pregnant. <laughs> but before she could even pull it out, he locked her in the cage <sighs> and they made eye contact right before he swam away. And she did the hand signal. I can't breathe, help me surface. Oh my god. And he started swimming away and she pulled out the sonogram and kept pushing it in the water, but he never turned around. It was found with her dead body. Yeah. And Minji had told Mandy that she thought he was gonna change. She wasn't gonna divorce him anymore. For their family, for their baby. And Henry starts crying as an emotional Mandy walks off. Henry killed not just Minji, but also their baby. And he also never had to kill Minji. She was never going to divorce him because she was going to have his baby and she wanted a family. So I don't wow. think he's crying because he genuinely cares for his baby. Yeah. I think he's crying because his life could have been perfect. He could have gotten all the money, all the power, because now they have a baby together. Hmm. In the end, Henry was executed for the murder of his wife. And do you guys know what case this is inspired by? Yes. Oh my gosh. You do? Yes, I f of course. <laughs> yeah, well, in, in the real story, she survives. It's um, the cliff murder case. So husband pushed pregnant wife off a 110-foot cliff while they were vacationing in Thailand. And it was a whole thing. The police she were... She was pregnant. Yeah. And he was a gambler. Yes. They got married really abruptly. And it was like a weird marriage. She was pretty wealthy. He was not. He also had this like really sick, twisted idea. Like, oh, woe is me. The world should revolve around me. Just like him. Like, she promised me for richer, mm. for poorer. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. You know, this kind of reminds me of um, The Invisible Guest. Yes. But it also reminds me of Shutter Island. Mm. Like, everyone's playing a part. The hospital yeah. part was giving me strong Shutter Island part yeah. where she's like, tell me where the body is. And it's, uh -huh. yeah, so much of it was reminiscent. A lot of people call it like a Hitchcock-esque movie. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. like a lot going on, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you rate this one? It's good. It's good. But I, I guess I figured out it was uh, that case. And I also had a lot of vibe from the Invisible Guests. Yeah, so you so, kind of... Yeah, I kind of figured out a lot of it. But it's still good. Yeah. The ending was cool. The, yeah. the, the hologram was interesting. Wow. The sonogram. Sonogram. The hologram. <laughs> <laughs> What's hologram? It's like the, the invisible, like, 3D that... Michael Jackson had a hologram performance. Oh, that's what I envisioned it. <laughs> <laughs> a sonogram, the black and white baby pic? Selfie? Oh! Baby first pic? <laughs> I envision her pull out a stick. <laughs> it's like a lightsaber hologram. <laughs> it's like an AI, 3D, yeah. orbiting the A baby sea. spinning a in baby. the water. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh okay. shit. And I was like, damn, that is so cool. <laughs> I'm like, damn. And he didn't look. <laughs> he didn't look. And he'd be swimming away. <laughs> what is that? Oh man. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Please let me know in the comments what are your thoughts on this one and I hope you guys enjoyed. Did you guys guess the case? Did you guys guess the ending? Did you guys guess the twist? How would you rate it? And I will see you guys tomorrow for the next one. Bye!